Praise Jesus. Praise the King of Kings. And praise the Lord of Lords. We are from the Rock Intercessor Ministries. We are today to preach to you the word of Jesus Christ. Hope that some of you will give your heart to Jesus Christ today. Amen. Today's message is Grow Up Time. It is about time, my dear friend, that we grow up. Amen. It is time to do what to grow up. You see, because we have a lot of big babies in Christmas today who might be the members of your church. And the problem we have here today in many churches is this, very frankly speaking, my dear people, we are being saved, but we are immature. Now, in the natural realm, you can be young ones, but it can be immature for a very long time. Isn't it? And it is true also in the spiritual reign. You can be born again, and yet you can, slippery, you can simply stop growing. So you can become immature Christian. And I'm confused today that many of us are in that part. Why? Because why? We have big babies, like the baby crying now. The same way today, many Christians, they are crying babies. You see? So today I want you to know that you ought to do what to grow spiritually. We must be spiritual world giant instead of crying our babies. Listen, something very interesting. In the passage of the scripture I'm going to read to you today. Because God has given us three categories of persons that is in this world. And you are one you are in one of those categories and so today i want you to listen and listen very well my dear friends because you will find out in one of those categories where you belong because you will never get anywhere until you know where you are you see many of us today will find it difficult to move forward why because we don't know where we are at least it's difficult for you to know where you are because you haven't figured out where you are. But when you find out where you are, you can move forward in this life. Supposing you go to a shopping mall, when you go there, there's a map. Show you all the map of the stores, where you are going to. And then you have this small, usually red dot, telling you, this is where you are. At least you know where you are in a shopping mall. But you know that you are going to a different shop so that means there's a direction for you to go there. The same way today. Many of us here today, we don't know where we are. And because of this, God sent me here today to preach to you. So that some of you can know where you are. You see? So you need to indicate where you are. You need to find out where we are. Because if you don't know where we are, we don't know where we're going. Because even if you see that map, if you don't know where you are, that map, that map will be what meaningless to you. More or less. So today... I want you to find a place where you are. Now the very question here is this, that the Bible asks in the book of Genesis, God asked man, by the way, was this, Adam, where are you? My question to you today, every one of you, where are you with God? How is your work with God? You see? That's the question you need to ask yourself today. Frankly speaking, just listen to what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Now, pay attention to this. But the natural man, do you hear that phrase, that little phrase, the natural man? So that means some of us are natural man. Or you say, but I can't sleep. What is wrong to be natural man? Wait till the moment to find out. Listen to again what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15. For he that is special. So now you also have a special man, which is over what against the opposition of what is what natural. So then you have the natural man, and now you have the special man, and the natural man does not understand the things of special things because why they are special design. Then again. You have the first Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1. Listen to it. 
And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to the special people, but as Kana. So now you have a word, Kana man. So these are the three categories that is in this world here today. I need to figure out where you are because God asked Adam, the first question ever asked in the world, Adam, where are you? So today, God bless you, my just guy loves you. Amen. So today I want you to say, are you a national man? Or are you a special man? Or are you a canon man? That's the question you need to ask yourself. You see, because why? These are the three categories of persons. Now, the casual, the natural, the, the canon man is not natural or special. He just was unnatural. In fact, it's abnormality. And so, you are one of those three categories today. Are you a natural man? Or are you a special man? Or are you a canon man? Or are you a natural woman? Or a special woman? Or a canon woman? You are in one of these three categories. And I want you today to understand it because why this is the word of God speaking to you today. So God put us in these three categories. Now, we are living in the world here today. We like to divide us into different categories. The upper class, the middle class, the lower class, the rich, the poor, the young, the old, the educated, the ignorant, and so forth. But God just simply do what put us in three categories. Nashara, Spishua, and Kana. So it is not the book or the book, uh, book of what the bank or the society. But I want you today to know it is the word of God speaking to your heart. I listen, my dear friends, because this is what God does here. He said, We are either you are Kana or you are Nashara or you are Spishua. Today, I want you to find out where you are. And where do you belong? You see, because if you are a Christian, you are not growing. You are an infant. And the Bible says only the infant demands milk. You don't need a wall. You don't need a solid food. You don't need meat. So personally speaking, I see myself growing since I gave my life to God three years ago. When I first started, I was in preaching this street. I was able to preach in the church. But now God is moving me from one A to B. Only God knows where I've been 10 years' time. But I know that, honestly speaking, it's not bragging. I'm growing. And I thank God for that. All the glory and all the praise belongs to Almighty Jesus Christ. Now, what is basically wrong with a Christian who is not growing? I don't want to hurt your feelings. I listen today. If you as a person do not love Jesus Christ more better than you loved him yesterday, you are backsliding. I repeat, if you don't love Jesus Christ better today than you love him yesterday, you are backsliding. Amen? So, day by day, our love for our Lord Jesus Christ must grow. He ought to do what to be a growing Christian. You see? There's nothing else confessed in your life except Jesus Christ. Are you a Christian? The Bible said in the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 33. First, see the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and everything will be added to you. So that means Jesus Christ confessed before your shopping. Jesus Christ confessed before your sunshine. Jesus Christ confessed before your work. Jesus Christ confessed before your family. Jesus Christ must be the first in everything that you are doing. Amen? So today, if you are not growing, you need to ask yourself, why am I not growing? Because you ought to do what to grow. And because of this, I have three propositions I want to give to you today. First of all, with natural man, listen to it, my dear friend. With natural man, there's no growth. It's impossible to grow. You see, you cannot grow spiritually. With a natural man, it is impossible. Why? Because a natural man is like a plastic flower. It doesn't matter how long you, you water it day by day, month by month, year by year, decades to come for eternity, that plastic flower never grow. Because why? There is no life in it. You see? And that's the condition of a natural man. So you need to ask yourself today, if you do not have Jesus Christ in your life, you, my dear friend, you're not growing. 
you are just a plastic flower you are just specially dead you are existing you have existence but you have no life pretty much no christ no life so friends a natural man has no special life are you listening because the bible describes the condition of a natural man that also includes every one of us apostle paul said this in ephesians chapter 2 verse 3 he said we, when we are with our lord jesus christ you know what he said he said we are by nature by nature should not for right. that's all of us if you don't have jesus christ in your life there's a punishment over your head the bible said the wages of sin is dead that means we are under the wrath of god now the only way you can come out from the wrath of god is to do what to receive jesus christ today as your lord and personal savior my dear friends you see that's what the bible says and then again even if you look in the book of Job, Job, you also the bible speaks there those who are jesus christ listen to what he say what he say he say essential essential having known the spirit so a natural man does not have the god spirit the holy spirit in him in spirit because why a natural man has only been born once into a natural world and if you only be born once into a natural world that means you to be born twice otherwise jesus christ said to nicodemus who was very educated more than enough he's a jewish person by the way and he said to them except you've been born again you cannot see the kingdom of god do you see that my dear friend you are living in the foreign world you've been born once but you get the day you've been born when you don't give your life to jesus christ when you die you see so that's the question you need to ask yourself today my dear friends if you have been born once you will die twice but if you've been born twice you will die once just the fiscal type my dear friend so you see the natural man is being born into the world of natural and because everything to him is natural smoking is natural to you because you're a natural man sleeping around access as high marriage is natural to you because you're a natural man or natural woman going to clubs is natural to you Having sleepover is natural to you. Anger is natural to you. Wickedness, all these evil things that you have here to the side is natural to you because why? You are a natural man and you are a natural woman. And there will not be any growth. It is impossible for any natural man or any natural woman to grow. First of all, because why? You don't have the spiritual activation. That is the Holy Spirit activating. You see, you are not motivated. All you are motivated to the things of this world. And that's why there's no growth in you. Because why the Spirit of God in human being is the one leading my mind, my emotion, my will, activating my hands, my feet, my ears, my mouth, my eyes, and so forth. So when I go into the world, the Spirit of God is telling me that the things, there's a danger here, so I need to do what to know. If anyone offer me a drink, I will not drink because why? I've been born of the Spirit of God. If someone offer me weed, I will not smoke weed because why? I, I hate the smell of weed. I love this. I, I, I love the smell of flowers. If someone offer me any drugs, I will not take it because why? I'm not a natural man anymore. That means there's a senses that have been activated in me. The Holy Spirit of God will tell me, do not do these things because why? These are the things for natural man. So you, my dear friend. If you're a natural man, that means you'll be operating the natural rain. That's why you go to the places you shouldn't go. Because why you don't have the Spirit of God. So, a natural man is pretty much it's like a flower that can never grow. Because there's no, it's a plastic flower that can never grow. You know what that means? You are going nowhere, my dear friend. Because why a natural man? And I want you to think today to see where you are. Because natural man or natural woman, they dress how they like. They don't look at their dress code. They just dress and up they go. You see? Because why you've been deceived by the devil. So I want you to listen to what this Christian saying here. Because why natural man has no special activation. He has no special appreciation as well. First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. Do you hear that? The natural man does not receive the things of God. They cannot receive the Spirit of God. Now, the word here receive is a very interesting word. If you look at what that actually means in Greek, it usually means to welcome. So that means the natural man 
has no spiritual appreciation and he does not work on the spiritual things. So then, the natural man and natural woman, they cannot appreciate the things of God. They can appreciate everything. They can appreciate drinking, smoking, you name it. They can appreciate the worldly things, all these uh, Netflix, uh, Games of Thrones, all these evil movies, all these sexual immoralities, everything. It is appreciation by natural man and natural woman. Talking about the pubs, the clubs, the bars, you name it. You can even appreciate the building and the cars. You can appreciate the music, you can appreciate the message that I'm preaching now. But then again, you can never welcome it. Because why? You're a natural man, a natural woman. Only those who have the spirit of God will appreciate the word of God. The Bible says the word of God is foolishness to those who are perishing. Perishing means going to hell. Those who don't love God, they can never appreciate the word of God. So why? The Bible says they are foolishness unto him. And that's the reason the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. For the word of God of the cross is folly to those who are perishing. But to us who have been saved, it is the power of God. So a natural man does not understand. A natural man can never get it. Why? Because why? You don't have the spiritual appreciation. You don't have the spiritual activation, which is the Holy Spirit. And several people today are lost. They can go to heaven. Why? Because why? Even going to heaven will be a miser miserable to you. Going to hell will be a torment to you. Going to, hell will, going to heaven will be miserable to you. Why? Because why? If you do not love God, that why you are living right now, you think you love God when you go to heaven. Of course not. So because of this, a natural man, a natural woman, they can never appreciate the things of God. Because they are specially designed. And now this brings me to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. A natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are fully to him. Neither can they know it. They does not welcome it. They doesn't receive it. They doesn't appreciate it. They can never understand. They can never get it. Why? Because the Bible said they are specially designed. And Jesus Christ said this in John 8, verse 47. Whoever is of God hears the words of God. That's the reason many of you today don't hear the word of God because why you don't belong to God. What I'm here preaching to you today, hoping that some of you will change your mind. Hoping that some of you today will accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. You see, because why preaching to those who don't know God is like pouring water on the rock. It's like watering a plastic flower. That can grow. It's not receiving what? Reception. It's like putting it in this way. It's like scoffing somebody who is blind. You can't do that because you know they're blind. They can't see. Many of you today, you can see, but especially blind. So I know your condition. Your condition is worth sin. And you need a cure. And the cure is Jesus Christ. You are sick. To the point of death. But there's a rescue. Jesus Christ is the rescue. Jesus Christ is the doctor that will cure you, my dear friend. So today I want you to change your mindset. You see, because why? The Bible says, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ told Nicodemus, highly educated, very religious man, except you've been born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. And so, if you don't have the spirit of God, you can change your dress code. You just dress anyhow you want because you think it's summer, you can just come out naked. It's like a street club, pretty much in the street. You know, for street club, you have to go and say, but now I see ladies, they don't dress modestly. They just dress anyhow they want. And I'm telling you today, the, the reason why you're dressing like that, because why you don't know God. Go to Africa, that's 40 degrees. The ladies there, they dress nice. They don't have to dress half naked. Walk in the middle of the street. Some of you today come out with your nighties. What a shame. And I'm telling you today, you need to think hard about your salvation. Amen? If a natural man or a natural woman, you don't know the things of God, that means you do the way you want. And I want you today to know because why? Your antenna is not working. It's like there's an antenna or there's a, there's a radio playing. If your, if your radio doesn't speak, that means there's something wrong there. The same way today, the word of God that you're coming from, you're not receiving because why? There's something wrong with your ears. 
And we know that your ear is the most important organ that God given to you for you to do what to listen. And that I will say, Fair come away hearing the word of Jesus Christ. So today, if you don't receive any signal, that means you don't know Jesus Christ. And because you don't have the Spirit of God, and the Bible says, If you don't have the Spirit of God, body without spirit is dead. And many Christians, frankly speaking, doesn't have the antenna as well. You see, call yourself a Christian. If you're not being born again, you're not a Christian. Do you know that, my dear friends? And so, Christians understand the word of God because why they tune to that name, J E S U S, Jesus Christ. When we hear him speak, the Bible, Jesus Christ said that he knows his sheep. And when he, when he speaks, his sheep hears him. Amen? I understand, my dear friends. Because a man will be a fool to say his music is not playing. Because why? He doesn't have the antenna. And if you don't have the antenna, which is the which is this by the way, the spirit of God is the organ that you ought to do what? To receive the spiritual knowledge. And the natural man does not understand this. Why? Because they are not spiritually activated. And they don't have spiritual appreciation. And now they don't also have what spiritual appropriation. They simply don't get it. So that means everything that I'm preaching now is stupid to them. Why? Because why? They cannot understand it because the Bible says it is foolishness for those who are perishing. Listen what Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1 to 2. Chapter 2, verse 1 to 5. Listen to it. And he said, when I came to you, brothers, did not come, proclaim to you a testimony of God with a lofty speech or wisdom. Now watch this. For I, decided, for I decided to know nothing among you except Christ Jesus and Him crucified. And when I was with you in witness and in fear, in much trouble, in my speech and my message, we are not in a plot words of wisdom, but demonstration of what? Spirit and power. Do not, do not reject the word of Jesus Christ when you hear it. Tomorrow may never come for some of us, my dear friends. And then verse 5 he says, That your faith may not rest in the wisdom of men. But in the power of God. And that's what I'm telling you today. What the wisdom can lead you to know we are my dear friend. Everything that you have ends here. But as a power, that the message I'm preaching to you today. That's a power in the word of Jesus Christ. You see, because why Apostle Paul was speaking to them, he wasn't weak, he wasn't fear, he wasn't troubled. But Paul was afraid about nothing at all, but except he was afraid of God. And also was the fear of God. And then again, more than the rest, he was afraid of the worldly wisdom. Worldly wisdom is very dangerous thing, my dear friend. Apostle Paul lowered himself that he might do what? That they might find faith through him. So the wisdom of man is pretty much foolishness in the eyes of God. The Bible said, the word of God is power for those who have received Jesus Christ. So Apostle Paul know the worldly wisdom is dangerous. Not only than just the word the wisdom is deceptive. You see, because why? In First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6, it says, Yet the mature we do not need to impair wisdom, although it is not the wisdom of this age or the rulers of this age who are doomed to pass away. Now, watch this verse 7. But we might impart a secret and a hidden wisdom of God, which God declared before the ages for our glory. So, Apostle Paul talking about your intellect and your worldly wisdom. We come to nothing one day, my dear friend. That's what the Bible is saying here today. So put every of every of your worldly wisdom, every of your educated, every of your degree, put them in the bin and humble yourself and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal self. If you don't do that, you cannot be saved. You see, because why the Bible said in First Corinthians chapter one, verse nine, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and I will discernment of the design out with trust. That means God will mock at them. Uh, 20 say where is the wisdom of the where is the one who is wise now god is throwing a challenge to you he said where is the one who is wise where is the scribe where is the debater of this age has not god made foolish the wisdom of this world for since in the wisdom of the world of, of god the world did not come to know god through wisdom do you hear that you cannot know god through your worldly wisdom what the wisdom is perishing my dear friend you see they don't teach you this in the school, my dear friend. You can learn these things in the school that I'm preaching to you today. You can learn it from your prime minister either. You can learn it from any of your MP. You can learn it from the queen, but you can learn it from the word of God, my dear friend. That's what I'm telling you today. For since 
In the wisdom of God, what did not come to know God through wisdom? And watch this, it pleases God through the foolishness. What I'm preaching to you now, for those who are being saved, hallelujah, but for those who have been not believing, they will perish. Now, 22 is said, for the Jew demise science, talk about science, the Greek seek for wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified. A storming blood to the Jews and folly to the Gentiles. So it's foolishness to those who are perishing. But verse 24, he said, But to those who are called, both the Jews and the Greek, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Do you hear that? Jesus Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. If you don't have Jesus Christ, you have no wisdom. Your earthly wisdom is pointless, my dear friend. You see, so verse 25, he said, For the foolishness of God is wiser than men. And the weaknesses of God is stronger than men. So, my dear friend, your wiseness is pretty much rubbish in the eyes of God. Your strength is weak in the eyes of God. Your intellect is weak in the eyes of God. It's pretty much nothing. Only when you humble yourself, God will lift you up. Only when you humble yourself, you will receive the word of Jesus Christ, my dear friend. So, look at the worldly wisdom. Where have you gotten us today in the society? Absolutely what nothing. The thing that matters more, that things that really count, we are not making any progress in it. We haven't made any progress in sin. We haven't made any progress in sorrow. We cannot definitely make any progress in death. And that's why today, the word the wisdom is totally word. Rubbish, my dear friends. You will take it to nowhere. It can never take you, it can never bring it to for you to understand the word of God. So, what is the whole point? You are educated when you die, you go to hell. You have all the home money when you die, you go to hell. You have the houses when you die, you go to hell. You have the best car when you die, you go to hell. You have a pretty face when you die, you go to hell without Jesus Christ, my dear friend. So, pretty much everything that we are fighting for will come to nothing one day. Everything you are looking around today, the Bible says, will pass away. The world is passing away. The beauty of the world is passing away. The money of the world is passing away. The burden of the world will pass away. What's going to count when you die? Do you know Jesus Christ, my dear friend? That's what will count. When you face him face to face, you have to give account to him. There's no if, there's no but about it, my dear friend. That is the word of God saying here today. So you need to think hard. Why are you here? Have you ever asked God, why do you create me? Why am I here? And you will find out why you are here. The whole duty of a man and woman also included is to do what? Is to obey God, to fear God, and to keep his commandment. If you are not doing that, you are a failure, my dear friend. It doesn't matter what your education is. You see? And that's what the Bible is saying here. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7, it says, But we impart a secret and a hidden wisdom of God, which God had de declared before the ages for our glory. And none of the rest of this age understood this. For if they have understood, they could not have crucified the, the Lord of glory. But it's written, just as it is written, What no eyes have seen, no ears have heard, no heart of man have imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. Verse 10. These things God has revealed to us through his spirit. For the spirit of no, I watch this. For the spirit searches all things and the, even the deep things of God. So you, my dear friend, a natural man is devoid for the spirit things. A natural man does not have spiritual appreciation, does not have spiritual activation, does not have spiritual appropriation. Because these things have been well hidden from them and not only that it's deceptive and not only that it is dangerous and it's also demonic because that's the reason the bible says that none of these rulers of this age understand this but if they have understand they couldn't have crucified the lord of glory i listen to me the best man of the romans the jewish the greek they crucified jesus christ and i'm talking to them about the intelligentsia the bible said that they took counsel together against him and so Paul says, if they have any wisdom at all, they couldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. So friends, case cross, my dear friends. Woman wisdom is devoid of the things that really count, you see. So natural man cannot understand the things of God, even as I'm preaching to you today. I've been preaching for a while, for more than almost like a year plus now. I see people, they, understand the, they don't understand the word of God because why? They, they show no interest. And when they hear it, sometimes they feel offended. 
Sometimes they shake their hands. Sometimes they close their ears. When you go to hell, you will not receive the message again if you are not willing to repent today and give your heart to Jesus Christ. I'd rather love you. I'd rather fear you to heaven than to love you to hell, my dear friend. Hell is real. Jesus Christ is real. Heaven is real. You have a decision, you have a decision to make. And don't do this procrastinating. It doesn't work anymore because we have a problem with that. Postponing things doesn't work. The Bible said today is not salvation, not tomorrow. Why? Because tomorrow will never come for some of us. And there's no repentance in the grave, my dear friend. So today, hearing the word of God, open your ears. Allow God to come inside. He says it's not going to get off your heart. If you are willing today to open your heart, He will come in and eat with you. So now this brings me now, I've talked to you already about natural man. Now let's talk about canal, canal man. Because Apostle Paul said, First Corinthians chapter 3 verse 1, But I, brothers, could not address you as a special people, but as people of flesh, as infants in Christ. If I feed you milk, I feed you with milk, not a solid food, for you are not ready for it. Even now, you are not yet ready. For you are still of the flesh. For why this jealousy and strife among you? Are you not of flesh? Behaving only in a woman way. That's the question. So yes, Apostle Paul saying, most of you today, you fight for things. Tooth and nails, like survival of the fittest. But everything that you are fighting here today, my dear friend, when you die, everything remains here. A carnal man or a carnal woman can never understand the spiritual things. It's like an animal. I have a dog. She doesn't pray. She can pray. Why? Because she's a dog. Now, you as a woman move away from being what God created you to do. You're not doing it. You're not serving God. You haven't received Jesus Christ as well as personal savior. You are working in God's property. You are enjoying God's summer, the sun, the moon, the stars, the fresh base. And still, you refuse to give your heart to Jesus Christ. You are a wicked person. You don't have to be a criminal to be a wicked person. What means to be a wicked person? If you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal servant, you are a kind of man. You are a kind of woman. You are a wicked person. That's not me saying, I'm just a Western, you know, boy. Saying the message. The message of Lord and care today. National man, natural woman, canal man, canal woman, special man, special woman. Which one are you, my dear friend? Because these are the three categories that is in this life. You have to be one of them. And you need to figure out where you are before it's too late, my dear friend. I love what Peter said here, First Peter chapter 2, verse 2. Now listen to what he said, like, no born, no born infant, they long for what? pure milk, so that they may they grow into salvation when the bible says milk is talking about word of god man shall not eat by bread alone but only what comes out from the mouth of jesus christ you can eat a food after you eat you go to the Lord. that's is gone but the word of god when it comes inside you is there in eternity my dear friend david said the word of god i store in my heart so that i will not sin against you so you my dear friend you need some milk like a new infant babies that have to drink milk to grow you as a person you have to find the word of god to eat it chew it digest it you see so there was a time you are little and now that you have grown now that means you go to work look after yourself you can do this my dear friend you can put a bible app right now on your phone and find out about what Jesus christ said about your life because when all said and done you are going to die one day there's no if there's no about it the new statistics are about this. One out of one dies. Every second people die. Or you say it might not be you, my dear friend. Who knows? It might be me, it might be you. But the question here is this. Are you ready to meet your maker when you die? That's the question you need to ask yourself. Because if you're not ready, why not repent and give your heart to Jesus Christ, my dear friend? You see? And all of us know what Hebrews chapter 5 verse 11 says. Above this we have so much to say. It is hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. Though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone else to teach you. Again, the basic principles of the oracle of God. You need milk, not sorry food. For everyone who is on the milk is on scale in the word of righteousness. 
since he is a child but the solid food is for the mature and for those who have the powers of war discernment and being trained constant practice to distinguish good from evil i listen my dear friends you have to distinguish what is good and what is evil if somebody pass you a drink pass you a cigarette don't take it don't let them share sin to you you can't you can't let people give you the things you, you can't let inside yourself can you imagine you are smoking you are drinking you are going out to have sleepover and then you die you are going to hell my dear friend there's no there's no if there's no part about it that's why you need to think hard my dear friend what you're doing with this time that you are living right now because when you die it is too is it is already late you can reject the word of god but when you go to hell you can't have the word of god anymore my dear friend when we give you trust it's for you to do what to read it and to, for you to know what god says about you my dear friend amen yeah. apostle paul says something very profound in first corinthians chapter 3 verse 15, 11 when i was a child i spoke like a child talked like a child i read like a child but when i became a man guess what he did he said he give up the shyness ways are you willing to give your shining ways my dear friend what about the spirit what about the spirit man First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. For we know that the person who taught expect the spirit of the thing that the person which is in self also no one comprehends the thought of God, except the spirit of God. Verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the word, but the spirit of who who is from God, that we might understand the things and freely given to us by God, that we are impart in this word, not taught by woman wisdom, again woman wisdom but taught by the Spirit of God, interpreting special truth. And to those who are special, now listen to this, the natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit, for they are fully to him, and is unable to do what to understand them, because why? They are specially designed. Now watch this, the special person judge all things, judges all things, but himself to be judged by no one. As I'm preaching to you today, you can judge me. The Bible says I'm a special man, Amen. But I'm judging all things. And I'm telling you today to repent and give your heart to Jesus Christ. I shall mean it, my dear friend. And then verse 16, it says, For who have understood the mind of the Lord, so to instruct him. Now watch this. But we, the Christians, the being born again, will have the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. And so, my dear friend, if you don't have the Spirit of God, you are not saved. The Bible goes on to say, Romans chapter 8, verse 9. You, however, are not on the flesh, but in the Spirit. Now watch this. In fact, the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Him. This is, this is the point. This is the heart of the message. If you don't have the Holy Spirit of God, you don't belong to God. You can pretend. You can massage it. It is pointless. Just why I say He knows the sheep. And when it comes, then they hear His voice. So you, my dear friend, you need to think hard. The things that you are doing. Amen. The Word of God speaking to your heart today. And then... This is very profound one as well. John 3, verse 24, 27. Now John answered, a person who cannot receive one thing unless it be given from heaven. Jesus Christ said, the only way you can come to me except if my father draws you near. And I pray to the, to the power of the Holy Spirit, to the power of the world, that you, my dear friend, start with forth, that you accept Jesus Christ today as your Lord and personal Savior. So the Psalm 119, verse 8 open my eyes that i may behold the wondrous things of your law now deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 29 the secret things belongs to the lord our god but the things that have been revealed to us are to the children to our children forever that they will listen to this that men do all things the word of god of this law so this brings me now to my final verse second timothy chapter 2 verse 15. do your best to present yourself to god as one being approved and work man we needed to be ashamed but right to dividing the word of the truth i come here today i'm not ashamed of the gospel of our lord jesus christ that's why i can look at your pretty faces and i tell you repent and give your heart to jesus christ move away from your evil ways of life from your lifestyle accept jesus christ today as your lord and personal savior so i will fall the name blessed in the mighty name of jesus jesus is lord hallelujah Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Jesus Christ is Lord, my dear friend. Jesus is Lord.